Remember when old cars were just old? When doing burnouts was encouraged by your buddies? And when ripping your Plymouth Cuda through an Alabama field was good, clean fun? Well, I don't, because I'm from Brooklyn. But Austin Griggs here, the founder of Riding Muscle Cars, not only does he get it, but he's making it his mission to show the rest of the world how it's done. I always had a ratty muscle car. Before the name was coined, I just, that's what I exemplified. And all of my buddies did it too. I've got many of friends that have had these things sitting around and they have dream cars. These are people's, the cars that people want and they wasn't doing anything with them. So I kind of felt the need to just kind of showcase what people had that could be driven. He's probably one of the nicest guys you're ever gonna meet and he grew up wrenching on and driving stuff like this. This is a 1970 Plymouth Barracuda. It's a very fun, rewarding car, man, and I don't worry about what's gonna happen to it. If I break it, I'll fix it. It's a 70 Cuda, I own it, and I can turn the key of it and take it wherever I want. Austin didn't want just any Barracuda, he wanted this Barracuda, because this car actually has some pretty cool history. I got this car just over like two and a half years ago, but I've been after this car since I was 16, 17 years old. When I met a, a now friend of mine, has been for a long time, uh, used to sit out in his yard, and I'm not kidding when I say this thing had goats on it all the time. There would be goats running around, jumping on the hood and on the roof. It broke my heart to see it always sitting on flat tires, but every time I would think that it was down for the count, he'd crank it up, put air in the tires, and take it to some local show. And I wanted the car so bad. One day when the car finally went for sale and I knew it was going to a different owner, I had to steal it out from underneath him. And uh, he knew if I kept it, it was gonna stay local and it was gonna stay looking just like his car forever. And he could drive it whenever he wants, so it kind of worked out for him, you know? Austin. He always wanted an AAR Cuda, which AAR, if you don't know, it's All American Racers. That's what it stands for. The AAR Cuda was meant to be in Trans Am Series racing. It's a racing car. That's what it was for. So even though it's not a real AAR, I've made it an AAR. I use it for racing, and I like to beat the dog out of it. <laughs> Austin knew he was never going to be able to afford an AAR Cuda. I mean, th those cars right now bring big money, and they're really tough to find. And while this car, at first glance, kind of has that double AR look, it's obviously not. But look at some of the things that he's got on this car. He does have the cowl hood on this car. He managed to get the hood off a real AAR Cuda when that particular car went through the car wash with the hood pins pulled out of the hood. The hood, once he got back on the road, flew up, it broke the corners off the hood, and well, kind of Austin got it for a good deal. The rear spoiler on the back, that's also off an AAR Cuda. If you look at it, it's got a big crack down the middle, but it doesn't matter because it looks cool. It's a factory white car with blue interior, but over it, the progression of its life, it changed colors many a times. It's been black, it's been blue, I honestly, I think it's aged well, and if you were to paint this, I think it would be a travesty. I beefed this up, and I, I didn't finish my that's, job that's there. Awesome. When you look underneath the car, you look at the sheet metal, and then you look at the sheet metal screws that come through the extra sheet metal that was supposed to be there when the new sheet metal was screwed into the sheet metal that's missing, if that makes any sense. Basically, a lot of this car has been replaced with sheet metal screws and just, well, sheet metal. There's even a license plate under this thing. As far as functionality, what we're talking about is a small block 340, a 727 with a reverse manual valve body in it, an eight and three quarter rear end with 355 gears, and that's it. It's a motor and a transmission and a rear end Three gauges that attack with a Cuda body on top, with steering. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 
It's so much fun and it's so rewarding to lay in the throttle loose. 340s don't get a whole lot of credit, but when they're just warmed over just a little bit, man, I, I challenge any warmed over big block to come tango with this thing, because it'll run. It runs really good. It's intoxicating to hit that pedal, you know? <laughs> I have to mention that one of the guys that Austin gets his inspiration from is his buddy, Mike Kobach. You go to his place, and it is just a mecca for old stuff. You'll look at it, and you will see cars that will, will blow your mind. Old Impalas, and Camaros, and Darts, and Dodges. Things are kind of lining his property that you're like, oh my god, what are you doing with these things? He has had big block Chevrolets strolled around since I've met the guy in my teens. He's constantly chucking motors in cars that are just dilapidated, ratty muscle cars. And I've been watching that since I was a kid. Why did we pull the tire off that red? Is he a car Hey, Austin. Yes, sir. How much tire pressure you want in these? And it's been inspiring to, to see, because I've seen him just stroll down the road, baking tires in a car that I've watched come out of the field get a big block that he pulled out from underneath the workbench into it, jam a four speed in it. Like, he'd be like, oh yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll change that and this, that and the other. And oh, okay, you talk to a normal person regularly. When they tell you that, you think six months, there's gonna be a car on the road. Give it two days. One of the cars that we kind of played with a little bit is Mike's red Camaro. Now, that car is a 1968 Camaro Z28, and it kind of follows the path of Austin's AAR Cuda, where this was like a Trans Am clone that he made. Mike Kovacs Z28 is a real Camaro Z28, but when you look at it, it doesn't look like any Z28 that ever came out of the showroom, right? It sits like a four by four. It's got these cool old kind of centerline style phone dial wheels from the 80s. The tires on it are probably 30 years old, and it's got this crazy tunnel ram with dual carbs on top and an intake that's just to die for. Going to a place like Mike Kobach's house is like, I don't know, going to a family member's house. I mean, we've known these guys for a day or two, and they already treated us like family. Everybody's huddled over the hoods of these cars. Everybody's trying to fix stuff. Everybody's asking questions, drinking beer, laughing, and just generally having a good time. And the cars are always secondary. And then stories come out about when they, you know, busted this knuckle or broke that foot because a tranny fell on it or something happened like that. The car is the catalyst for that. Oh, the importance of my friends is huge. I was the, the silly one It was like, I'll just buy a bunch of muscle cars. I've had them forever. We'll wrench on them and people are gonna love to see them. My friends come from states away, fly in, drive in, just to lay under these things and come out and enjoy these things with me. I can't say enough for my buddies Tim Heck and Randy Gauss and my brother David and my buddy Anthony Fulmer. Like these guys, they've turned wrenches night after night just to ensure that my cars make it. Sometimes you just don't know how to thank somebody enough for that. Yeah. Hey, it's sucking that lower radiator hose shut. Oh, damn it. I'm very appreciative of it, but they know that when their cars are down, whatever they got going on, I'm right there for them too. Want to jump in yeah. Yeah. Austin's ability to amass a crew, keep them together, and create a ratty car movement, well, part of that talent stems from his time in the armed forces. That thing is ready to drive. Austin was a crew chief for an F-16 in the Air Force. What made me join the Air Force is I'd just gotten out of high school. I didn't know how I was gonna make any money to do anything. I've always had hot rods, but I couldn't afford them. I remember I worked at a grocery store and I bought a expensive aftermarket distributor for my Monte Carlo. It took everything I had. Like I had worked for weeks, like saved after paying my bills, you know, and uh, I'd worked for weeks to buy a distributor and I was like this I can't work three weeks at a time to buy one part I was like, <laughs> so you know I needed a career airplanes and automobiles go hand in hand the core principles of them is the same 
and it's fun to, to wrench on something and get to go watch it dance around in the sky. I was an F-16 crew chief. What you do as a crew chief is you change engines, you change landing gear components, hydraulic components, troubleshoot any of the aircraft systems, and you're also responsible for an airplane, and they are the protection of this country. So if it needs to be called on, it has to be ready. A pilot gets in that thing, and he can't make it through his mission, and more importantly can't make it home, there's a problem. What that did was that told Austin, you know what, when I go home, I don't want everything to be perfect. I want to relax, I want to unwind a little bit, and I want to play with my cars. You know, the whole time I worked on these airplanes, my 69 Dart was sitting right there at the flight line. I could, I could be at my jet working, I could look out and see my six-pack hood sitting on my 318 Dart with the big 275-60s out back, just in eye shot. There's my hot rod. Get out, turn my toolbox in, and get my ragtag muscle car and just thunder down, get it till I get off base, because you can't, can't act a fool on base, but uh, as soon as I'd hit that gate, man, I, I mean, it, it wasn't nothing black mark as soon as I'd cover the bridge. <laughs> what? <laughs> Time and time again, we'll get submissions for this show where people go, I would love for you to drive my car, but I don't think it's nice enough. And the fact is, well, what is nice enough? To you, even if your car is a bit on the rowdy side, it might be the nicest thing in the world. And to us, that's really all that matters. I can park right up front at the grocery store. It doesn't matter to me. If somebody door dings it, I did. Adds character, don't care. I'll remember if there's a red mark on this thing from something else that's sitting next to me. And when I'm mad, I'll just go, mm, dang. Oh well. Austin's philosophy was so great, in fact, that we flew across the country to Alabama to check out his event called the No Shine List. I felt the need to make some cruises, make some races, just kind of showcase what people had that could be driven. I don't know why you're here, all right? <laughs> I don't know how many times 100 Hot Rods gets out, but uh, I, I have never seen this before. He figured that he was gonna get 30 or 40 cars that show up. We showed up this morning, there was like 105 cars. We're gonna keep doing this again. Man, it's, it's humbling to see how many people have shown up grassroots pickup, you know, out of the automotive world. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out of here as organized as we can without hitting each other. Remember, these are ratty muscle cars. Make sure you're giving room. Don't drive up somebody's tailpipe. Don't do anything stupid. Let's not get hurt today. When we get to the drag strip, it's all skinny pedal all day. When you have a hundred muscle cars and muscle trucks and hot rods rumbling down the road, that's a sight to be seen. There were a couple of guys from South Carolina, a couple of guys from Virginia that rolled in, and their cars were far from perfect. One guy showed up, his car didn't have any windows. There were a couple of like rat rods that they didn't have any windshields. There were cars that were pickup trucks. There were cars that people drug out of the weeds that hadn't been moved in 25 years, and they got them ready just for this event. My dad, we built this car together when I was 14 years old, literally. Fathers and sons, we had sons and daughters, we had cousins, we had brothers, we had friends. People came together around this, this ratty muscle car movement in cars that a lot of people would look at and just kind of discard and be like, well, why would you drive that? Why don't you paint it? Why don't you do this? And I've been in that position where somebody comes up and like they'll look at one of my cars and be like, well, don't you think you're gonna paint it? And it's like, man, F off, I don't have to paint a damn thing, it's my car. came to the Mecca for a Saturday morning to bring together 105 cars that all kind of looked like this, sounded like this, were kind of dirty like this. If you don't think people are having fun enjoying these old cars in the states that they're in, you guys are crazy. I need you to look closely at the individuals and the vehicles you saw today. Look at the camaraderie, the smiles, and the sense of family. And then consider this. These 
are not show cars. They are not objects of status or wealth, but instead, they're an outlet that helps one leave the problems of the daily grind outside the garage door, which is exactly where they belong. Watch Put Up or Shut Up, the newest show coming exclusively to Motor Trend On Demand, July 20th, hosted by me, Brian Lowe's. So just a reminder that episodes of the House of Muscle go live on MotorTrendOnDemand.com about a month before they go live on YouTube. So head on over there and check them out. Seeing my buddy Eddie and his 1972 Oldsmobile Cutlass could mean only one thing. I was back home in my old neighborhood. Welcome to my city. I remember when the first time I actually saw it, I heard this thing just rumble and bop, 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 and it just looked burly. Watch the latest episode now.